And the first thing to note is when you open the application of QuickTime, nothing actually happens. You are going to have two options that you can use in order to begin recording with your QuickTime player on the MacBook. Once you have the application open, you can either secondary click and choose new movie recording, new audio recording, or new screen recording, or you can go to your file and it will also be there. Once you choose that, you will then be given your options in order to record. Remember, you can export any of these files to Google Drive, to your desktop, or send it out to iMovie or GarageBand in order to edit and cut. One thing to note is that if you are recording with QuickTime, it is better to do a continuous recording, even if you make a mistake, than it is to try to do a bunch of smaller clips because each file that you stop after you've recorded in QuickTime creates an individual file. No matter which type you choose, audio will be captured, whether it be movie, audio, or screen recording. If I choose a new audio recording, which is in the middle, I'm going to have several options. Once the box pops up, I can choose the white arrow, and that will allow me to either use the built-in microphone, or if I have an external microphone that I have plugged in via USB, I can choose that one. You'll also notice that I have quality. I can have high quality or maximum quality. If I choose the maximum quality audio, it is going to give me a little bit of a higher file in size. So instead of it being 500 kilobytes, it might be 750 kilobytes. So keep that in mind when choosing a recording. If I choose a new movie recording, which is the first option, it will default to the camera on my Mac. It will then show me and what I'm doing. I can use this to record myself teaching at the whiteboard or during classroom instruction if I want to capture something the students are actively working on. Another option is to capture the iPad. If your iPad is updated and your Mac is updated, when you choose a movie recording, you can plug in your iPad using the sync cable and choose your iPad. Whatever the name of your iPad is will show up under the built-in camera, and at that point it will still continue to capture audio. A new screen recording is your third option. Whenever you choose this, you will have a drop-down menu that you can see to make sure the correct microphone is chosen, as well as the option to show mouse clicks during your recording. Whenever you choose this, you will see a circle pop up as you click while you record. You have two options whenever you do a screen recording. If you simply click, you will record the full screen, corner to corner, side to side. If you choose, you can drag and capture a specific part of the screen. Once you have recorded a screen capture or a movie or an audio, you're going to have a box that looks like this. It will say untitled at the top. You'll be able to share this file, play it, review it, um, and go back over it. If you do want to save this, we will go up to file and we will export or save. If you export, notice you have several options that you can export in the quality of format which was recorded. You can also cut the audio out or you can share it to iTunes. We are going to do save, which is your command S, and this is going to bring up my usual box. Now you may see this box, and if you do, if you click your white arrow, you can expand this to be uh, every location on your Mac. So when I, when I save at this point, I will export it as and give it the title that I would like. So let's say that I'm doing a unit on um, fractions. I may call this fractions video one, and I will save it to my desktop. If I want to add a tag, I can. If I want to save it to Google Drive directly or anything like that, I am able to do so. Then I will click save and it will save the video depending on how long it is or how much information is there. It may take a little more time. And that is now located and I can go to my finder. I can go to desktop and notice Fractions Video 1 is now current and there. So at that point I can share that in Google Drive. I can add it to Google Classroom. I can open that in iMovie and edit it or I can share it in a place like iTunes U. Another option I have under File, if I have created a QuickTime audio, video, or screen recording, if I go to File, I may have Share Options. Now if you do um, an audio recording, you're not going to have the Share Options the same way, but if I do a screen recording or a movie, I can actually add it to my photos or I can send it directly to YouTube. If I'm linked with Facebook and I want to, I can. So you do have a few other options. Notice AirDrop shows up here, and when you do that, that will allow you to do a direct sharing or direct adding to photos or direct to YouTube, and it will cut out the need to do several of the other steps. It is completely up to you how you do it. 
You just want to be aware and know of what type of thing you want to do with the file. If you're trying to do an audio recording and you want to get it into GarageBand, a simple save will work for that. But if you just do a quick recording and you want to be able to get it out to YouTube to share it with a lot of people, you can go directly to YouTube through your WCPS account and share it without further editing. Thank you for watching this video. Please make sure to check out the other modules on the WCPS Professional Learning site.